Hi folks, it's Billy Bragg here. Just want to talk a little bit about the importance of the 100 Club in British pop culture. If you go to the club, there's a plaque on the wall to a guy named Ken Collier, who is described as a cornetist. Uh, he was the leader of uh, one of the most influential trad jazz bands during the trad boom in the 50s and 1960s. That's why they call him the governor. But he was also responsible for beginning the skiffle craze in the UK in the mid 1950s because him and his mates also played acoustic guitars, uh, American, African-American folk music songs in their set, broadly speaking, Lead Belly's repertoire. So it would be folk, gospel, blues songs as part of an attempt to kind of educate their audience about African-American uh, roots music and culture. And in 1956, a former member of Collier's band, the banjo player Lonnie Donegan had a huge hit in the UK with a Lead Belly song, Rock Island Line, which kicked off the skiffle craze, which also uh, happened uh, in and around the environs of the of the 100 Club. There really should be a plaque on the wall about skiffle there as well, because it's probably the last venue from that period that's, that's still open for music. The rest of them are long gone. Uh, and skiffle was very similar to punk rock in the sense that it was do it yourself, it was anti-commercial, and you only needed to know three chords to play all the songs. And of course, the 100 Club played a role in the rise of punk rock in Britain in the 70s as well, because it was the venue for the 1976 Punk Rock Festival, the first big gathering of uh, British punk bands, the Sex Pistols, the Clash, the Buzzcocks, lots of other bands, performed over two days. And in a wonderful kind of completing of the circle, the night after the original 100 Club Punk Rock Festival, Ken Collier's jazz band played. I wonder if Ken kind of looked at the, at the mess that had been left by the two days of the punk festival and saw an echo in that of what he was doing because he was described, when he was playing trad jazz in the early days, he was described as, a, or rather dismissed, he was dismissed as a primitive playing uncommercial music. There was a, a, there was a kind of back to basics thing going on in what Ken did, in what the Skifflers did, and in what the Ramones and Dr. Feelgood and the other punk bands were doing in the, in the 1970s. And the 100 Club was a home to all this. So it's an absolutely crucial space because it's one of the few survivals from that, that period where British pop culture was finding its place in the world. So we need to keep it open. We need to keep supporting it. More power to you. All the best.